السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اما بعد ڈیئر برادرز اینڈ سسٹرز انادر ڈیفیکلٹ ویک ہیز پاسٹ از بائی اے ویری ڈیفیکلٹ ویک فار اس as well as for the larger Muslim community. The whole Ummah faced something that was unprecedented. For us closer to home, we lost another of our regular Musallis in the, earlier in the week, Iftikhar Hussain Sahab, who used to live most Jumas, he would pray right in the first row. He was here last week and he's not with us today. That is the destroyer of pleasures, the death that takes us away. And that is what I want to talk about today. As a larger community, the happenings in Afghanistan, the earthquake, terrible, terrible conditions, thousands of people losing their lives. Initial reports of 2,500, which quickly changed to 5,500, people having lost their lives. Still bodies are being recovered from under the rubble. God alone knows how many are the true reports. Struggling, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for those who have passed away. And may He make it easy for those who survive this terrible situation. And then... We go further and we come to the situation that is there in Palestine. What is happening? Unprecedented, unimaginable things. What is happening to our Muslim brothers and sisters? And for what fault of theirs? Nothing. Nothing at all. How can we understand what is happening there? Electricity cut off, water cut off, food and drink cut off. Just imagine yourself in that situation for a couple of hours. No electricity, no food, no water. How are they surviving? What are they going through? How are we ever going to feel what they are feeling? Unimaginable. Basic human needs being taken away. The most basic of things. How can they be doing this to fellow human beings? What kind of zalimoon are these? Truly unprecedented. How can they do this? But it is happening. And it is probably going to get worse. We don't even know the actual ground reality. Electricity cut off, people are not even able to contact properly. We don't know what is happening on the ground. Only Allah knows. And He is watching. He is truly watching each and everything that is happening. Sabr. We need to have some sabr. And we need to learn from what is happening. Allah is seeing the kind of sabr that those people are going through. Minute by minute, they are facing their death. They are pondering over what is the imminent death that is coming to them. Allah is watching those atrocities being committed by the people from the opposite side. You think he'll let them go? Justice is bound to happen in the court of Allah. It is just a matter of time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them the strength and the patience to go through these difficult times. The least we can do, the least is to keep them in our du'as. If we are not constantly doing even that, then it is a shame upon us. It is truly a shame upon us if we can't even think about them in our du'as. 
if we don't spend some extra few minutes praying for them, seeking Allah's help for them, are you waiting for something of that sort to happen to you? When are we going to wake up? When are we going to wake up? Let us make the necessary dua. Seek Allah's help for yourself and for your fellow human beings. For your ummah. For the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This death that I'm talking about is something that those people are thinking about every second. Let us start thinking about our deaths that are also imminent to happen. A story from Sheikh Ibn Usaymin Rahimahullah. He used to live in a very small village in Saudi Arabia. And in the 80s, the king of that time, he visited Sheikh Ibn Usaymin's village. And this was a famous Sheikh. Right? A famous scholar. So the king visited the house of Sheikh. Not the other way around where a common man visits the king's house. And Sheikh Ibn Usaymin, being the great scholar that he is, he was living in a hut, mud-based hut. And looking at the conditions, the king said, let me build you a house. And the sheikh had a strict policy. No, I'm not going to get any gifts from the king. And he said, no. The king insisted. The sheikh said, no. The king kept on insisting. No. How many times are you going to reject the king? But the sheikh kept saying no. And then he said, I am actually building a house in such and such town. The king said, okay, in, in that case, that's fine. I'll make a move. Now the disciples of Shaykh Usaymin, Rahimahullah, they asked him, confused, what has just happened? What is this house that you're building, Shaykh, in that such and such town? We had no idea that you're doing this. We had no clue. And we have been with you all along. And the Shaykh's response, isn't the graveyard in that town? I am building my house of the Akhirah. I am building and preparing for that house in that grave, in that graveyard. For a man to think in this manner, in front of the king, it's not a common man. This is what separates the best of the moment from the rest. Something to learn from. A person who was constantly pondering over death that is going to come. A situation that our Muslim brothers and sisters in Gaza are facing right now, pondering over death that is going to come. A situation that we ourselves need to be in so that we also ponder over that imminent death. It is going to happen. Each and every one of us is going to face it. There is no doubt about it. What are we doing about it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Tilka darul akhirah. This is the hereafter. And it is going to be given to those who are thinking about the akhirah. Who are thinking about that death. About that destination, that final goal is in mind. They are certain of their meeting with their Lord. They are certain of their meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some interactions that are going on that, have, that I have heard about those people of Gaza in Palestine, they are saying the exact same words. We are waiting for our meeting with our Lord. Because they don't see anything else. They don't see any other hope. The meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only thing that is giving them hope to keep living, to keep breathing. That is the situation. On the day of judgment, when 
these righteous people will be given their books in their right hand. What will they be saying? They will be saying that I knew, I knew that I'll get my hisab on this day. I knew that the atrocities that have been committed against me, I will get justice for it on this day, on that day of judgment. They are waiting for it. They are certain of their meeting with Allah. That conviction is there. Right? That conviction is there. Heart is with Allah. How many of our hearts are with Allah? How many of our hearts are even with those masoom people who are suffering? How many of our hearts? Brothers and sisters, the inevitability of death needs to come to the focus of our minds and hearts. It has to. It has to. Just think of our fellow Musalli who was here last week and he is not here today. He was sitting here right here. He is not there. It is going to happen. We need to be constantly pondering over this death. Constantly understanding that this life is temporary. Constantly understanding that we are going to leave everything and anything in this world behind. This is why the Quran and the Sunnah constantly remind us. Alladhi khalaq al wal hayata. Right? Both death and life is in, in the hands of Allah. He is the one who created it. We go to a burial. We watch the deceased being buried. What are we thinking? Are we thinking that we are not going to be in those shoes soon? Or are we just getting depressed and sad that, okay, my time is going to come soon? No. Don't go down that path either. Don't be sad and depressed about the aspect of death coming to us because it is bound to happen. But the purpose of going to a burial and seeing our deceased, understanding how our dead are being taken away, is to understand that our religion is the truth. It is the truth. It is the haq. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is going to cause us to die. A non-believer may say, I deny your Lord. He might say, I deny your messenger. But they cannot deny death. They simply cannot deny death. And alhamdulillah, our religion is the only one that puts meaning in death. This deen tells us that there is life after death. Right? There is an eternity waiting for you. This is just a transitionary period. Temporary time. Before that ultimate life is beginning. So dear brothers and sisters, what are we doing to prepare for it? What are we doing? Prophet ﷺ told us, frequently think about that. Frequently think about that which is going to destroy the pleasures. Meaning frequently think about death. The destroyer of pleasures of this world. It is going to happen. Right? Think about it. Why should we think? Why should we think? So that we live a productive life. A life on the Siratul Mustaqim. A life that takes us to that eternal life in the best of manners. With the best of deeds. Am I ready? Are we ready? Inshallah, those brothers and sisters in Palestine, they are ready. Because they are constantly thinking of Allah, no matter what the situation. They are thinking of Allah. Non-stop. My time is coming. Constant du'as. They are probably not even sleeping properly, right? Obviously. What about us? Are they not better than us in this instance? 
Yes, they are facing difficulties in this dunya. But inshallah, it is making them grow levels in the Jannah. They are going higher and higher up, inshallah. May Allah help them to get there with ease. Brothers and sisters, think about it. When was the last time that you just closed your eyes and visualized the angel of death coming to you? Visualize that angel of death coming to you. And when that happens, only two scenarios can happen. The first scenario, and may Allah save us from it, is where when the angel of death comes, you will say, please go back. Give me one more chance. Oh Lord, I have not done right. I'll be good. I'll change myself. And those people who are committing, committing those atrocities in Palestine, they will probably be saying this. Right? They'll be saying, oh Allah, give me a chance. We, we did a mistake. Let me get back. Let me change. But the Qadr of Allah will have passed. The Qadr of Allah will have passed. They cannot go back to this life. They will have to face the consequences of what they did in this life. And Allah is watching. That justice will come in. Allah's decree has been written. It is just a matter of time. And then the second scenario. What is it? Where the angel of death comes and you want to go away with them. You want to go away with them. See, there is no doubt when the angel of death comes, whether a believer or a non-believer, you will feel terrified. But the difference is, the believer will feel terrified for a very short period of time. It is more a shock of what has happened. Okay, oh, I am gone now. It is more about that. And then, those angels of death, their calmness, their calmness, the way they will be looking, the majestic nature, the beautiful nature of them will ease you automatically. The difficulties of this life would have gone. You will start feeling comfortable. You will start, you will see these angels smiling. And what will they say? They will say, La takhafu. Don't be scared. Don't be sad. We will take care of you from here. And inshallah, our brothers and sisters who have been passing away in the last week and who will probably be passing away in the next coming week will probably be facing this. The difficulties of this life will go away and the calmness of those angels will take over them. They will be shown their place in Jannah. The window of Jannah will be opened up for them, inshallah. They will probably be saying, why didn't the death come earlier? May Allah make it easy for them. Truly, may Allah make it easy for them. Don't you want to die in, in a noble way? Don't you want to die with the shahada on your lips? Don't you want to die in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How is that going to happen? The only way that is going to happen is if you are on the siratul mustaqim. You have to be. See, from time to time we hear about people dying while praying, dying while they are in sujood, dying while they are fasting. When you hear of such stories, doesn't it make you feel good? You say, mashallah, alhamdulillah, they died in a play, in a situation where it is ideal. Don't you wish you can also just die in that way? But just wishing is not going to cut it, right? You cannot just say, I wish I died this way and that's it. You have to live a life. You have to make dua to Allah to be righteous enough to die in that situation. It is actually a gift from Allah to die in a way while you are worshipping. It doesn't happen that easily. right? You have to be thinking about it. But none of us really knows when we are going to die. 
none of us knows when and how we are going to die and that is why we have to be constantly be preparing for it constantly pray for pre- prepare for it and pray for it seek allah's help in getting a good death seek allah's help in seeking refuge from that evil and an evil death be prepared be prepared then inshallah we will be seeing the jannah in our graves we will be seeing our place in jannah in the graves our brothers and sisters who are facing difficulties in this life they will inshallah see it there's more of a guarantee for them seeing it because of what they have faced in this world because of the atrocities that they have faced in gaza and palestine they will be seeing the jannah in their graves inshallah but you and i how are we going to see it we haven't faced much we have to start thinking about it how am i pious enough am i righteous enough to be also one of those who sees jannah in a window in the grave because the opposite opposite of what we will see the people who are committing atrocities they will be seeing their place in jahannam in the grave jahannam it is going to happen they will probably be seeing ya allah don't bring the day of judgment don't bring it near keep it far from me let it not happen because they don't want to go into that place in jahannam think about it they will have to give their hisab they will have to answer for their atrocities no matter what nation they come from they cannot be constantly be doing this to any human let alone to our ummah who are being punished for worshiping one allah for worshiping one lord is that our fault is that why we are being punished it happened at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has been happening it will keep happening till the day of judgment there will be people on the good side and the bad side let us pray and make our best of efforts to be on that good side is what is happening a result of our deeds are we responsible in some way to what is happening to our brothers and sisters because we don't follow our religion the by right way think about it are we responsible in any way let us not be the reason for it my brothers and sisters none of us knows who out of us will not be praying here juma because they can't because the time has come sooner or later the juma that you pray will be the last juma for you in this dunya just like our brother last week somebody or other will be playing the last juma today prepare for it prepare for it 50 or so generations have passed between the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and us each and every one has died across allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said he was telling the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you are going to die and everybody else do they think that if we are making you die the rest will not everybody will die there is no doubt about it but may we die in a way that we are able to hear those blessed words ya ayatun nafsul mutma'inna o oh, you blessed soul o oh, you blissful soul as soon as you die the angels are calling you out irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyah Go to your Lord. He is waiting. He is pleased with you. Extremely happy with you. Go. Fadhuli fi badi, wadhuli jannati. Enter the list of my slaves, and enter my jannah that I have prepared for you. That is what we live for, and nobody can take that away from us. Nobody can take that away from us. the news that we have been hearing is truly terrible 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 
One instance that I received just this morning of how a brother in Palestine is writing a WhatsApp message to his father in Australia. He's telling him, Ya Abi, I am scared. And look at the situation of the father. What can he answer? What help can he provide from far away? Nothing. Nothing. The father is saying, I am scared for you and your family. The son responds, I am hearing bombs, blasts, non-stop. Electricity has been cut off. Water has been cut off. Neighborhoods are being wiped off. And the message that we are receiving is, they have just begun. They have just begun. They are looking to massacre everybody. Allah is watching. And that poor father just says, may Allah help you in this. What else can he say? What else could he say from far away? Brothers and sisters, you and I need to remember those brothers and sisters in our du'as. The death might be imminent, but your prayers, your du'as might help ease the pain. It might help for Allah's help to come sooner rather than later. It might help for that justice to happen sooner rather than later. It is coming. It is obvious that it is coming. The help of Allah will come sooner or later. Let us not give up on that first and foremost. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in all parts of the world. May he make it easy for us. May he help us to understand what we can do in these scenarios, which is to get back on the right path and to pray for our beloved brothers and sisters across the world. May he forgive all our sins that we may have committed in the past. May he help us to change from this very moment. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين. بريك فصلنا.